So this is a pair of uh, Air Jordan 1 Retro Low OG Shadows and I've seen a few reviews on these so I uh, wanted them since they were announced and I, I really like my Jordan 1 Lows so that's the reason why I decided to pull the trigger and it's basically an OG colorway so it released in uh, 1985 and was uh, one of the original sort of highs that came out and I am a fan of uh, more of the, the low top sneakers anyway in general and that goes for sort of all sneakers really I'm not too much a fan of the high versions but uh, with this one um, you know if, if I did get the high version I'd buy it because uh, I do like uh, having some of the OG colorways in, in the high top and also the low tops and uh, at the end of the day this is a classic colorway so you can, can't go wrong with this particular pair and like I said, it's a, it's a low version, so I really like that. It's a, a really good one to have uh, if you're looking for, I suppose, a darker colour to rock during the sort of summer, spring months. So in terms of the details, this this comes in a uh, black, medium, grey and white colourway. This comes with two sets of laces as well, so it comes with the, uh, the black that you get inside here, and also a, a grey pair. So that kind of covers the lace options that you get inside the box. But uh, this black pair is a, is a nice pair in my opinion and uh, you, know, you can't go wrong with a pair of black and grey uh, Jordan 1 lows. And these have a, a polyurethane uh, cup sole. Uh, basically this is a, a polyurethane midsole, it's quite sort of uh, thick and sturdy as a normal Jordan 1 is. And it supposedly has an airbag unit inside there as well in the heel area. And it's uh, made up of all leather uh, construction, so you can see here this leather quality. This almost feels like a, a new buck material on the swoosh, ankle collar and the toe box area. Uh, not quite sort of the standard sort of premium leather that you normally get. And I think a bit different to what you get on the black toe version in my opinion. It feels slightly more sort of lacquered. And the price was £145. So with the comfort and sizing, I think these are on the medium to firm side. I think when I've had a you know any sort of Jordan 1 low they you know they're not the most I suppose comfortable sneakers nowadays but what I do like about them is that the fact that they have a sort of flat footbed and they sort of sit quite sort of low to the ground so that's one of the reasons why I like to wear them and they're also kind of a bit shoe like so they're quite sort of wide in terms of their silhouette as well and basically there isn't much support around the arch either it's a very flat shoe the only support you get is from like the insole being in, inside there and that's kind of basically all you have and I'd say the wearing time for this is around sort of the four to eight hours mark. I think uh, when you start wearing these in, you'll get sort of a bit of tension around the sort of four foot area, but that after a while sort of dies down. Like I said, it takes sort of anywhere between four to eight hours and the uh, material kind of sort of softens in general and just feels a lot nicer and easier to wear on foot. And I'd recommend going up half size. A lot of people say not to go up half size, but in my opinion, just to get an extra bit of toe space, Especially if you have like a wide foot, go up half size, but everyone else can go sort of tutor size really. But if, like I say, if you have a wide foot, which I do, I'd kind of like to have a bit more space. Uh, say with, uh, if I'm wearing sort of thicker socks, my toe sort of comes up to about here. Um, if I was kind of wearing tutor size, then it'd be sort of slightly further up, which is about here. So I kind of like the extra bit of space. Just so, I, you know, depends on the socks that I, I rock it with. I can sort of, you know, manage that without having kind of too much issues in the toe box area. And these also have a really great grip in my opinion as well. So as you can sort of see here, it's got this the pivoted point on there and then basically uh, this radial pattern going around it and that, that basically adds up to a lot of the sort of traction that you get and it works well and always has and always will. So with the look and style, I mean it's a classic OG colorway at the end of the day so you can't go wrong with a pair of these and uh, sort of I can recommend these easily to anyone to sort of wear at any time of the, the seasons. So it's one of those ones where, you know, Pretty much any time you want to rock a, a Jordan 1 low, this is one that to, to bring out. So autumn, winter, spring, summer, it all kind of works because it's the dark colours and they won't show that much uh, wear and tear either. So, you know, I recommend these and this is one of the ones where I'd sort of say, you know, you could essentially sort of double up as well, um, similar to like a bread pair really. And again, this one being black and grey, I feel like, you know, you can rock these casual, smart casual and this is the kind of thing that I would wear instead of shoes. So. Uh, definitely easily to wear with the sh you know a chinos and uh, some shirts and things like that so and also you can dress it down and wear it with sort of cargo pants or joggers as well so it works with it with either and also shorts as well 
and it comes with the black laces as you can see here i've just put them in for now but you know you can also get the gray ones that come in the box but oh i may even try sale because i have a pair of sale laces that i might think will work well with this uh, if not then i'll go with the gray uh, but white would obviously work as well because it would just match midsole so with the pros i like the uh, shadow like og color blocking anyway and uh, i'm a fan of any kind of og style color blocking it's just one of those things it's just sort of classic and timeless and it's kind of how we're programmed to to see jordan ones really so and then sometimes when they sort of release those different colors we're not kind of want, wanting that and uh, usually it's only when you've got sort of the, the same sort of color blocking is when people are sort of more interested and with this one i think it's an everyday sneaker really so potentially i would even you know look to sort of pick up a, another pair if i can get them on sale because they are sitting anyway so um if i can pick up another pair then i probably will but you know at the end of the day these are sort of timeless sneakers and they last for ages and they won't really the soles won't crack on them uh, the only thing that will go over time is probably the leather but even that sort of stands up quite well in my, in my opinion and the uh, leather quality on this is, uh, is, is good. I won't say it's amazing, but it's good, you know. And uh, like I say, with the Jordan 1 Lowe's, I find that once they sort of soften up, they feel really nice on foot. And in terms of cons, the cost is just uh, priced £145, which is uh, more than what Lowe's are used to be, like £10 more than sort of last year. And it's kind of going on the higher side. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a classic. And so sadly, that's kind of the price that it is at the moment. So you can't do too much about that. And with the, the look and style, I'll give it a five out of five. I think for me, it's one of those sneakers that just is, like I said, a timeless sneaker and I can't really sort of say too much about it really. It just looks the, the business and uh, just basically rock it with anything and anything. And the comfort is a three. So this one I feel was not that comfortable and obviously Jordan ones in general nowadays aren't the most comfortable of sneakers. But if you're looking for a replacement sort of shoe to wear, then this is a good uh, viable option in my opinion. But, you know, I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable, but it's not like the, the premium comfort that you would get from sort of other sneakers in terms of lifestyle. And with the quality, I'll give that a four. I think it's just the sort of this new bucky, slightly new bucky material on the back here. It just feels, it feels like leather, but not the greatest quality of leather. So, and also on the toe box. So I think with those types of leather panels, I think, you know, they could probably have done a bit better on. And, uh, I think the black toe and the powder blue that released were much nicer in terms of leather quality. Not not completely uh, amazing, but still better than what you get here. And the pricing, I'm going to give that a four. I think it's priced a little bit too high. I would want um, Jordan 1 Lowe's to retail at 125, 130, because at the end of the day, you're not getting much tech in there. And I think most of the material, the cost that you're paying for is the leather itself. Um, so yeah, so I, in my opinion, I think they should be lower in price. But my uh, review scores probably aren't going to make too much sense because at the end of the day I've been given the quality a low rating and the comfort a low rating and, and in my eyes you can't do much about those um, and basically the wearability of this particular sneaker sort of far outweighs um, anything else and like I said it's a classic colorway uh, it's one that you can't go wrong with and in my opinion that's why it deserves a five and if I you know was basically looking for a sneaker to wear you know quick to sort of grab and put on this is a good one a good option to have really so in my opinion it works well um like i said sometimes the scores don't match up to what the overall score is but in my eyes it's a, a five out of five sneaker and at the end of the day i think when, if it went up to sort of say 170 pounds that's probably when i'd probably go actually i'm not paying that money and it's a bit too way too high at the moment it's still sort of palatable but even 145 pounds it's probably asking a bit too much